Hello, fourth grade. It's Mrs. Sutter. Hope everybody is doing well today. It is Monday, May 4th. Okay, for today, we are going to be doing a review of our lesson that we did on um, last Thursday. So in your book, it was lesson 7.7. .7. Uh, you do not need to work in your book. If you ha can get an extra piece of scratch paper, we're going to be working out some problems, just a quick review um, on just an extra sheet of paper, okay? And then you will have an assignment for this lesson uh, on Google Classroom, the practice book page that coordinates with this. Okay, if you remember, last Thursday, we were introduced to how to add and subtract mixed numbers. There was two methods I showed you how to use. It's up to you. You guys use whatever method you want. I am going to go ahead and review both uh, ways of doing it so that you can determine what works for you. Okay, let's go ahead and start with prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end, amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining me with that. Okay. So let's uh, do uh, the first method. Okay, if I have one and three eighths, and I wanna add to that two and seven eighths. Now remember, your denominators are the same, so you're not gonna be needing to change anything with your denominators. Eventually, you're gonna be adding and subtracting with unlike denominators. Okay, I am gonna focus, you can either focus just on your whole numbers, or you can focus just on your fractions. I'm gonna just go ahead and focus on my whole numbers first. So one plus two is three. Now I'm gonna focus just on my fractions. My denominator stays the same. I'm gonna add my numerators, three plus seven is 10. Now remember, this is an improper fraction and I cannot leave it in that form. In order to change an improper fraction to a mixed number, we have to do a division problem. Remember, this does look like a fraction. It is a fraction, but it's also a division problem. In order to do that, we are going to take our 8 and divide it into 10. 10 is my dividend. That's the number inside the house. 8 is my divisor, the number on the outside of the house. Let's go ahead and do regular division. You guys know how to do this. 8 times what gets you close to 10? 8 times 1. Subtract. This is the part where people get tripped up, okay? We talked about this last week. There's numbers here to create my new mixed number. Your quotient, which is the number on top of the house, is 1. Your numerator, I'm sorry, your remainder becomes your numerator. Oh, my pen is dying and my uh, di divisor or my denominator stays the same. Uh, I gotta get another pen, hang on just a second. Okay. All right, sorry, it's gonna be a different color here. Uh, denominator stays the same. So my answer is one and two eighths, but that's just the answer to the improper fraction. Don't forget, I still have three over here. So I need to add three to my whole number here. So the actual answer is gonna be four and two eighths, okay? Because you've gotta combine this whole number with this entire new mixed number. Okay, that was one method to do it. If you wanna do it that way, that's totally fine. I do wanna revisit the other way that I showed you how to do it. I'm wondering, uh, I can't really show it side to side. That's right, I'm gonna rewrite it here. One and three eighths, it's the same problem. Nothing's gonna change. In this method, that's when I take my mixed numbers and change them to improper fractions, then do the addition, and then solve, uh, do some work at the end to get the actual answer. If you remember, let's review how to change a mixed number to an improper fraction. Take your denominator, multiply it by your whole number, add your numerator. So 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11. 
So my new fraction is 11 over 8. Denominator stays the same. Let's do the same method. Multiply your denominator by your whole number. <coughs> Excuse me. And then add 7. So 8 times 2 is 16 plus 7 more. 23 over 8. Okay, so I have both improper fractions. <coughs> mm, sorry, I have a tickle in my throat. Okay, I'm going to add just my numerators. My denominator stays the same. Nothing is going to change for that. Okay. 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 plus 2 is 3. Improper fraction. I cannot leave it like that. Take your denominator, divide it in to your numerator. And you know what? I am going to squeeze, I'm going to move this up a little bit because I can tell I'm going to run out of room. 8 divided into 34. 8 times what gets me close to 34? 8 times 4. 32. Subtract. Two. And remember, my answer is here. My quotient is going to be my whole number. My remainder is my denominator. Uh, numerator, I'm sorry. And my denominator stays the same. Well, look at that. I get the same answer here as I get here. So either method you can use. Okay, if you're more comfortable with this one, I'm totally fine with that. The only reason I'm showing you guys this is because eventually you will be using this method, okay? So I'm just introducing it to you. You do what works for you, okay? Everybody's brain works differently, so you do what works for you, okay? All right, let's practice a few more, and then I'll let you guys go on your Google Classroom so you can uh, do the assignment. Let's try uh, 6 and 5 eighths. And I'm going to subtract, ooh, I like this one here, subtract 4. Okay. Don't overthink this, guys. There is no fraction here, so that's almost like saying there's a 0 there. So 5 eighths minus nothing is still 5 eighths, so nothing changes. 6 take away 4 is 2. That's it. You're done. That one was easy. Eventually, we're going to be filling, doing some of these problems where we're subtracting where the fraction is on the bottom, on the second uh, number, and there's no fraction up here, just a whole number. That gets a little more complicated. And we'll get there, and I'll show you guys how to figure those out. Nine and one half. If I'm going too fast, remember, pause the video at any time. And I am adding. Okay. Again, you can concentrate on just the whole numbers first or just the fractions. Whatever you guys want to do is fine with me. 9 plus 8 is 17. 1 half plus 1 half. Well, the denominator stays the same. Your new numerator is 2. And you already know that whenever you have a numerator and a denominator that are the same, that is equivalent to one whole. My answer isn't one, my answer is gonna be 18 because you've gotta combine your whole number and your new whole number here. Six and three fifths. And I'm going to add four and three fifths. Uh, I'm sorry, that's a three. Six plus four is 10. Look at my fractions. Three plus three is six. Okay, I've got an improper fraction. Can't leave it like that. Don't let, if I'm going too fast, pause it, okay guys? I wanna make sure you guys are getting this. 
again, my answer just for my fraction is going to be one. That's my, my one whole. Numerator, denominator. That's not my answer though. Don't forget, we gotta include this guy. So your answer is really gonna be 11 and one fifth. Okay, for this next one, I'm gonna put it on my whiteboard and I would like for you to pause the video and to solve it on your own. You can use any method you want. Okay, don't get tripped up by this one, guys. There's just no whole number, okay? So remember, if there's, if there's nothing here, that's almost like just saying that it, it's a zero. Okay, go ahead and solve. Pay attention to your operation. Okay, hopefully you're back. Eight and three tenths. Let's do another subtraction problem to finish us off here. Let's do uh, seven and three fifths. And you're gonna subtract six and three fifths. Okay, don't overthink it guys, you're subtracting. Okay, go ahead and pause. Okay, hopefully you're back. If I have three fifths and I'm subtracting three fifths, well, I end up with zero. So you don't even have to write anything down here. You could write zero over zero if you want, but that you'll typically never really see that. So all I have to do is worry about my whole numbers. Seven to eight three six is one. That's it, that's your answer. Okay, so that was just a real quick review. I wanna make sure you guys are really feeling comfortable with this topic, okay? Uh, please go on to Google Classroom and you will have an assignment there. And again, continue to submit it however you like. Um, it's much easier for me to grade it on Google Classroom, but if you still wanna send pictures or whatever, you do what works for you guys, okay? Okay, so tomorrow is gonna be uh, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. We'll get into more of subtracting of mixed numbers and we're gonna have to be doing, a, they call it renaming, but it's all, also we, in school, we normally call it like regrouping. So tomorrow's lesson is going to be pretty involved as well. Okay, let me know if I can help you guys, if there's anything that I can do for you, and uh, praying all is well. Sacred Heart of Jesus, pray for us. Bye, we'll talk tomorrow.